Hello, welcome to theCUBE's live coverage here. We're Databricks, Data Plus AI Summit in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We are in the Lake House. This is the Lake House Media Studio. The Cube's got a little corner of it. Obviously Databricks has their live from the Lake House live feed. Check that out, they got a great schedule and we're thankful for Databricks for allowing us to do our CUBE coverage here for two days and then we're going to go back to the press room and do a lot of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Got a great guest here. We got an AI influencer, Vinny Jeswal, who's here. She was just on the Databricks Live from the Lake House. Vinny, thanks for coming on. You're an AI and data influencer. You work at Bike Dance now. You worked at Databricks before. Great to have you on. Yeah, it's such a pleasure. Thank you for having me and giving me this opportunity. Well, great to see you. I love to hear the story that you're seeing developing right now. One of the things we've been tracking is how data and open source are kind of coming together and we coined the term data developer. This mm -hmm. idea that a new persona is going to emerge out of open source where data is going to be part of their coding, like in the CI-CD pipeline, where you got the refactoring of like this lake house philosophy, platform engineering, the emergence of data products. Yeah, yeah. Catalogs and all kinds of cool things, and then just developers coding on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the new emergent. I mean, this is the younger generation. They're loving this, and 12,000 people in there. Exactly, yeah, it's exciting times. And I was uh, honored to be a part of that momentum, how the technologies were developed. Uh, so I come from the open source. I was at the Citibank before, I worked there for five years. Yeah. And uh, I worked on a lot of innovation projects, ranging from cloud. And we were talking about Hadoop. So we uh, we ran Hadoop migrations to Apache Spark. That's how I got like in introduced to Spark yeah. community, and it has never uh, stopped. stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what a great history! It's kind of like history. Hey, we're like historians now. <laughs> that seems like so long ago. Let's talk about what you're seeing now because there's so much new stuff emerging. Obviously, generative AI is mm -hmm. is really cool. I mean, that's like a it feels like a generational shift. It's like a shot of uh, adrenaline yeah. for for the community because so much more is happening. And then the role of data, data nerds are like out there moving up the ranks, coding, building, creating new startups. Exactly. I would call it as like, uh, since AI is a gold rush, data is the gold. Because whoever has that data is going to win the race or maybe like be at the forefront. Because data is very crucial to whatever AI applications we built. So that's what I'm seeing. And I think open source allows basically for everybody to come together and democratize the access. So now everybody can use that software. That's what ChatGPT did. They open source their software and now they're having feedback from, the, from all over the world. Basically they are making their own app intelligent and a lot of products are being built on that. Similarly, like every other company is now in that phase where they are looking into open source and uh, we talked about data, uh, delta sharing. I worked on a few projects. Uh, yeah, let's explain just one of your projects. Definitely, so uh, I joined uh, Databricks when it was very small. We were very few hundred employees. And um, whatever you see now, we have like Unity Catalog, delta sharing, uh, MLflow. Now this keynote announcement this morning, we had AI, uh, Lakehouse AI, uh, which was exciting. This is all built from the feedback that data pioneers give us. They tell us what to build next, and that's the beauty of open source, because you get to get feedback from developers, what they want to build next, what they, what challenges they are running into, and open source actually allows us to overcome those challenges. Yeah. That's what Generative AI is doing. Yeah, now. I like yeah. the Delta um, Lake. Um, I love the Lake House IQ. They announced the idea that data is your intellectual property. Yeah. Talk about gold. Yeah. You got to store that gold somewhere. Someone's Some. going to steal the gold. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you're harvesting the right data, but also using the data, not giving it away. Exactly. Ollie was very hardcore mm -hmm. uh, on stage in a good way, saying, hey, your data is your IP. Know how to handle it. Yeah. Amazon's also saying the same thing with how they're handling um, their VPCs and keeping things nice and tight, licensing issues. So mm. a lot of kind of like details that yeah. when you kind of, when you, the buzz goes off, you're like, okay, now I got a compliance, I got to do all this work. Mm -hmm. People want it to be easy. Exactly. I think that's why uh, platforms are emerging now 
instead of open source a lot of like uh, uh, on top of open source people are building platforms so it's easier for people to manage and get their applications running in production much more faster and if you heard the keynote this morning there was a, a concept uh, that was announced which was ai gateway ml flow ai gateway so if you use that there is another layer which allows the protection of that data and because we want to make sure that PII data is captured. Sometimes if you ask ChatGPT a question, you might accidentally uh, type in some sensitive information and we want to make sure anybody who uh, is providing software, they can, they can kind of take care of that. And uh, I also heard throughout this conference that a lot of people are getting confused with all the tools. Like now they have to manage OpenAI, now they have to manage BARD, where is the intersection? So I, it was great announcement that they have gateway so that only one credential gets used and you have access to all of your apps in one place. And I think that's the trend I see in the open source as well. Yeah. People are building AI marketplace or some kind of like a platform where everybody can click and use the apps. So that is exciting. What have, Vinny, what are you hearing in the hallways here? As an influencer, you have your ear to the ground, you're watching everyone, you're posting uh, content, um, you're in navigation helping people figure out things like mm -hmm. which models to work on. What are you hearing most? Are we in kind of a discovery mode? How would you s assess the current psychology of the developers, the market? Um, what's your, what are you hearing? Yeah, so, so in fact, ChatGPT had the most uh, most uh, adoption within like first few weeks and still only 70% of the population has heard about the technology and what I al also hear is now all the companies are making technology shift in their hiring process so they are adding chat GPT knowledge or skills to their uh, you know skill requirements yeah. which is going to be the next big thing so I think one of the useful things for everybody is learn some AI skill or generative AI and there are a lot of good courses. So I work with uh, Academia and LinkedIn and Coursera, all these companies too, so we can launch yeah. some, make it easy for people to understand um, and it will. it is going to impact it. it. And I think you asked about discovery mode or where it is. Right now everybody is trying to figure out which where to go next, what can yeah. I do, like which skills I can learn to make sure that I'm running that product. I think that's that's the phase we are at. People yeah. are aware, they need to learn, and um, it's already here. Like every company is talking about it, they are actively building the projects. Just in one or two months, I have seen chat GPT version of each AI company. Like they are <laughs> launching that product, you know? <laughs> we so. have our Cube AI product too. Yeah. Every, I mean, AI is data. And this is going to be an application. Uh -huh. I am so excited about this trend. I think I've never been more excited than anything I can remember before at this level. Even the dot-com area, the web, and even the PCs, which I loved yeah. back then. And I, and Ali kind of walked through that. This is a generational new thing. Mm -hmm. Anyone under the age of 30 certainly is all over this. Yeah. And even older entrepreneurs and executives are obviously seeing the big aha moment. So we're excited to see what comes next and I'm excited to find out uh, how your influence is going and how the things that you're working on, mm -hmm. how do you see, see that coming together? I mean, the young people are like, this is a revolution. Yeah, I think I just like the technology and I'm super passionate about data and AI. Since 11 years, I have been working in this space and never a dull moment. Yeah. My family tells me like, can you just uh, take a moment and just... Uh, Not talk about data no, and AI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Everybody I talk to, yeah, it's data yeah. and AI. And I think... Uh, I'm the same way. Yeah, and I, I want to pick people up and uh, make sure that they, yeah. they are aware of it. And that's why I'm uh, working with foundations like Linux Organization, yeah. as well as Grace Hopper. So I'm a co-chair at Grace Hopper. So we are building this open source uh, yeah. day at Grace Hopper Conference, which is a very popular diverse uh, movement for the community. Yeah. And I'm working with Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, a yeah. lot of different companies to bring their projects so that yeah. next generation can get hands on and they can get their inputs because there is Gen, uh, what is this, Gen Z yeah. population. So <laughs> we have to make sure we incorporate their feedback as well, what they think about it and uh, equip them with whatever the latest technologies are. I yeah. always say to the Gen Z 
and that generation. You can solve all the problems that we caused you with yeah. AI now, instead of it being so negative. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think the whole, this whole negativity around regulation, I don't think that's real. I think most people that I talk to, yeah. they go, okay, yeah, we got to be safe, but no one's really thinking about it that much. And I don't think it's appropriate right now to think of it that way. Mm -hmm. I think right now, if the, if the horse doesn't come out of the barn, then there's never going to be good AI. So we got to get it out there. Yeah. Once it's out there, then yeah. I think it's responsible to watch it, uh -huh. but not try to restrict the early organic growth of AI. And right now, the creativity yeah. is at an all-time high. You're seeing great leaders like Ali and others stepping up to the plate. It's a race. Even Amazon, Microsoft going at it. Um, developers are emerging. Yeah. It's really... Uh, and one more thing to that, uh, to add to that is uh, every... Uh, I was at Linux conference and I'm in, in like most of the open source conferences uh, we can imagine. Um, so whenever I see companies building their open source strategy, so I also work at ByteDance and we are building this open source function at ByteDance uh, to make sure that we are at the forefront. We bring our tools to the community and everybody is realizing that there is a lot of meaning to open source and they want to get on that ride. And I think another yeah. part about uh, governance that you said, Delta sharing is one of them. So Delta sharing allows a recipient yeah. and sender to have a very encrypted communication. And that's a very necessary thing for the next generation. So I used to work at Citibank, it's funny. Um, this morning there was a keynote from JP Morgan, which was a similar story yeah. for Citibank as well. We have to make sure that uh, all of our uh, Data discoverability is one of the things that big corporations yeah. face and Delta sharing is going to yeah. help with that. Yeah. In, every, in every movement I've been involved in yeah. that's been a real revolution, there's always been a de facto standards kind of moment where people come together um, and I think Ollie's ending the format wars is a good gesture. Yeah. We saw it with TCP IP and, and networking, the PC, open, open computer model there, open wins. Never bet against open source, mm -hmm. ever. That's yeah. now standard. It's not even like, open source is the software industry. Exactly. There's nothing else, so. Yeah, great. I had actually a great honor to uh, be a part of his uh, company, and I still follow him, and he's a great mentor. He, he, he kind of has it, like whenever uh, he talks to Ben Horowitz as well, I like to have those, pick up those conversations, what they are seeing in the acquisition and, yeah. um, yeah. Uh, investor market, it's it's very yeah. insightful conversations whenever He's we sit always with Always a them. great CEO, great yeah. person, friend of, good friend of theCUBE, yeah. and thank you for coming on yeah. theCUBE. Thank really you so much, it, it was such yeah. an honor. Great. Thank you for letting me talk about AI yep. and open source. Our yeah. pleasure. AI influencers, we got theCUBE hosts, theCUBE collective, getting all the data here at Databricks event, Data plus AI, theCUBE's got our own AI, we're building our own language model. AI is just new software, and it has data built in, Data native, this is all new wave coming. We are here on the ground covering it. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.